Hey guys, welcome to Make Anything, it's Devin here. And I've got another 3D printer review, not too long after the last one, but for good reason. So two weeks ago, I took a look at Creality's CR10S Pro 3D printer, and I mentioned a few reasons why it wasn't quite up to par with their earlier CR10 style printers. And that whole review, I had to bite my tongue because I had this printer in my back pocket. This is not a Creality printer, but it's basically everything that I was hoping the CR10S Pro would be. I'm gonna tell you why this is quickly becoming my favorite 3D printer in the workshop on today's review of the Sidewinder X1 printer. Let's do it. Cool. So I got my first 3D printer in fall of 2014. It was a MakerBot Replicator 2. It cost me over $2,000. It was so expensive, but that's kind of what you had to spend back then for a great printer that didn't require a lot of tinkering and assembly and electronic know-how. And you know what? It served me well. For three years, that was the only printer I had, and I got some great prints out of it. Since then, well, I've gotten a lot more printers. I started doing reviews. I started my channel, Make Anything. I've tested probably close to 50 different types of 3D printers by now, and 96% of those have all been Bowden-type extruders. With Bowden-style printers, we have a carriage off to the side with a gear that feeds the filament through this tube and into the hot end that's on the actual moving carriage. I think the main advantages of the Bowden-style printer are, for one thing, it costs less, so I'm testing mostly hobby range, more affordable printers, so they're almost all Bowden style printers. And it also takes weight off of this moving carriage, which usually lets you print faster. Now that's great, and I've been happy with all these Bowden style printers, like all the CR10s, but I think I just forgot how amazing direct drive extrusion is. And that's what's going on on this X1 printer. This is a direct drive printer because the stepper motor and gears that are feeding the filament are part of this assembly on the carriage that's moving with the whole printer. So the filament is being grabbed and pushed directly into the hot end instead of being pushed from way over to the side. It's actually a lot more simple in that regard and can help prevent a lot of problems. And it's also really great when it comes to printing in a lot of different materials. So of course I did a lot of printing with PLA. It's my go-to filament. And here you can really see how much detail the Sidewinder can capture with this print using Matterhacker's Translucent Blue. And again with this version printed using Filamentum's Vertigo Starlight at a 0.08 millimeter layer height. I also printed the same flint vase that I printed on all the Creality printers in my last review. And this one came out looking great, just like all the rest. It might still not be 100% perfect, but for the kind of stuff I do, and for a $400 printer, I really couldn't ask for more. As a bit of a torture test, I printed the same model at half scale as a wireframe. This one came out quite stringy, but I think that's a lot to do with the quality of the filament, and just the settings weren't quite right for this kind of a print. Still, for what it is, it's pretty impressive. That said, I think a more simple, smooth print better shows off the quality of a printer. And that's why I printed this octopus hanger that I designed years ago. It's actually a really great test print because it's got those four tentacles coming upwards that really test the printer's ability to move between pillars and printing really thin, tiny parts. Taking a closer look, we can really see how clean this print came out. Look at this perfectly round, shiny head, a really nice bottom layer, and even the very tips of the tentacles came out quite well. I also printed several of my Astrolabicon puzzles, and I think those also do a great job of showing the consistency among the layers. Again, it's not 100% perfect, but these are definitely impressive results out of a $400 printer. And these are just some of my favorite PLA prints, but the Sidewinder really stands out when it comes to printing other materials. Here are some parts that I printed using eSun's PETG filament, and I was able to print these nice, fairly large parts without any warping, and just generally good layer quality. 
This particular print had some very noticeable seams, and I could definitely fix that with some tuning of my settings, but it's also just a result of printing with this translucent filament. I also printed hundreds of poly panels on the Sidewinder. These were made with Filamentum's CPE filament, which prints at a very high temperature, and these came out super great as well, with the perfect tolerances and everything. But the one print that I'm most impressed with is this one right here. This is a model of my ear, which I printed using NinjaFlex TPU filament. This is one of the more flexible filaments that you can buy, and because of that, it can be quite difficult to print with. But on the Sidewinder, I managed to get this beautiful print at a very low layer height, 0.08 millimeters again. And you can barely see the layer lines on this one. It just came out looking really clean. Even the rather steep overhang on the back of the ear. I mean, I think this is quite clearly the cleanest Ninja Flex print that I've ever managed to get off of any printer. I was able to print this on the X1 for a few reasons. Because of that direct drive extruder, there's nowhere for the filament to buckle or jam like it often would do on a Bowden printer. On top of that, this printer also has a volcano style hot end, which means the actual nozzle is a lot longer on the inside. It's a long metal part, which means there's more space for the filament to melt into a consistent consistency. And uh, it's another thing that prevents jamming and helps increase reliability print speed, and just the ability to push out filament really quickly. Those two things combined are really game changers. Like I mentioned, a big downside of direct drive extruder printers has been the added weight on the carriage, but that's really not a problem with this printer because this thing is so sturdy. While this has the same general structure as the CR10 style printers, you'll notice not only does this have a double wide aluminum extrusions on the sides, but along the top as well. And the extrusion here for the actual carriage is triple wide. It's a really nice solid chunk of aluminum. Everything here is built so rigidly that uh, it kind of makes the direct drive system work really well. This printer also has pretty much all of the benefits that I mentioned about the CR10S Pro without the detractors. So it's got the dual Z axis rods and stepper motors. It's got the really sleek unified body design. It's got a touch screen. It takes USB and a micro SD. Like that's just overkill. And uh, you'll also notice that I'm talking about this printer while something is actually printing. And I usually don't print while I'm recording my review because the printer can be too noisy. This is one of the quietest printers I've ever used. I mean, I can get real close to it and you pretty much only hear the fan, which isn't loud. So that's kind of amazing. It's usually not a game changer for me, but it's definitely nice to have such a quiet printer. You also heard me complain about the build tack style bed on the CR10S Pro. Well, this has one of my favorite styles of print bed, which is that ultra base type. Uh, I don't know, it goes by a lot of different names, but any cubic has ultra base and this works essentially the same way. It's a glass bed with a special surface coating that makes prints stick extremely well. And then when the printer is cooled down, the prints just pop right off. It works so well on this. The bed is very flat. There's no automatic leveling. It's assisted leveling with these nice big knobs on the bottom. And I love that. Automatic leveling, like I said, it's unnecessary, adds complication. This leveling system works absolutely fantastically. And it's very easy to adjust it if necessary. I love it. Like the CR10S Pro, this printer also has power resume function, so if you accidentally unplug it or if you have a power outage, you can continue the print afterwards. It's got a filament runout sensor, which I typically don't use on most printers. On this one, I have been using it. I haven't had any false alarms, so it's been okay for what it's worth. So I've said a lot of good things, but surely there are some bad things about this printer, right? Well, hardly, but there are a few things. First of all, when I first got this printer, assembly was crazy easy. It was maybe a 20 minute assembly. You get these two parts, you screw them together. It's like all the CR10S style printers, super easy to assemble by now. Although this one did have a few things that concerned me. The first thing I noticed was this crack on the housing here. It's purely aesthetic, but it did make me a little concerned about how this printer was shipped. It was packed really well, but it did manage to get that crack, which is a little bit worrying. 
Also, one of these flat ribbon cables was slightly damaged when I received it. One of the little pins on the end of the ribbon cable was bent. And if I didn't notice that, I could have destroyed it by plugging it in wrong. So I was able to fix that pin and plug it in and it hasn't given me any problems. And these flat ribbon cables should be a lot more reliable now compared to traditional cables. So that's all great. And another thing that was happening was that the silicone adhesive that sticks the uh, bed heating unit to the bottom of the build bed, it was peeling off on one corner. I stuck it back on with my fingers and it hasn't come down again. I was able to notice those things and fix them right away, so it, it hasn't given me any problems. Uh, the only other thing that I really hated was the spool loading system on the top. The spool holder that originally came with this printer had the spool sitting on top of four bearings and rolling along that uh, system, which works fine except for the fact that if you have different widths of spools, you have to take a Allen key, loosen one side and adjust it so that the spool sits on those bearings. And I have a lot of different brands of filament, so that became pretty annoying. I ended up swapping out the spool holder for another one that I had laying around. It's easy enough to just print a spool holder on the side too and have that feed into the printer. It's not a big deal. In terms of the printer as it's operating now, the prints that are coming off of it, I'm absolutely floored and in love with this printer. For $400, I think it'll be extremely hard to find another printer right now that can compete with this X1 Sidewinder. It's just really well done, and especially coming from this brand that no one had ever heard of, I think this is their flagship printer. Well, it's really promising and I can't wait to see what else they come up with. Uh, this was already an updated version. Joe from 3D Maker Noob put out his review uh, like a week ago. Even with the older version, he's had fantastic results as well. He absolutely loves it. And he even had success with the timber fill, which was the one filament that I had problems with. So it's possible. If you're interested in buying this printer, I'll put links in the description as always. Uh, it's available on Amazon, on Gearbest, anywhere else you go for cheap printers. And uh, it's pretty awesome. I'll definitely keep you guys updated. I'll keep using this for projects here on Make Anything. And if you visit makeanything.design slash favorites, you can see my up-to-date list ranking my favorite 3D printers. And uh, this one is definitely gonna make it on the list. And if it continues performing as well as it has, it will continue working its way up that list. It might be my favorite 3D printer. I want to use it a little bit longer, but it's getting there. It's pretty fantastic. So that's it for today's video, but I will continue using this Sidewinder a lot on future projects. So if you want to see how it continues to function, make sure you're subscribed. Or if you want to know what this ear is about, don't you want to know? Subscribe to the channel and you'll find out soon enough. But that's it for today, so until next time, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything, and as always, stay inspired. <laughs>